What's up, space engineers? Thanks again for tuning in. I want to thank you all again because I'm super, super excited today. Uh, I have a small grid airtight dropship that I made, and it's uh, called the Starling. And uh, it's not finished. There's a few details around the, the body that I want to you know, maybe do better, uh, a few things I want to add, kind of like this thing down here I just added, we'll get to that in a second, um, the armoring on it, I wanted to keep it minimalistic, because the more armor you put on these small grid ships, the heavier it gets, so I kind of put like little nice bracers there, and kind of, you know, armoring around the engines, a uh, little armor around the uh, rocket pods and the guns there, you know, uh, I'm not really good at the whole making things look good, but I am okay at making things functional. So down here we've got a uh, rotatable minigun turret that you can use as a uh, passenger in there. And uh, on top you got more turrets and you got your connector for the ship. Uh, I could probably move that a little bit more center on the top of the head there for clearance from the turrets there. But, um... Like I said, I, this is like going to be like the first version of this ship that I'm doing. I'm going to try and do more refined versions. But I was so excited when I got this ship done. I thought, hey, let's make a video. So there's uh, the thrusters on the side there. You got your bottom thrusters. Uh, six on the bottom, three on each side, left and right, and then six on the top. Um, it does handle planetary atmosphere wonderfully. And this is the cool thing about it. Check this out. So that pulls down, the rotors fold up, and the merge block actually connects. Don't ask me how I'm getting that to happen, because I know a lot of people are having problems with merge blocks connecting from pistons. I think it has to do with the fact that I have multiple subgrids stacked up on there. I've got a piston down there holding a piston that's actually holding those two rotors. But anyway, you just hit those buttons, and as you saw when the air was pumping out from the first time we opened this thing this is airtight poof there we go and we got some cryopods in here six of them for your more advanced soldiers that you keep in cryo sleep and um <laughs> you know two survival kits and one in case one goes down you know two is always better than one you got your conveyors up here which make like a kind of a neat ceiling like a caution ceiling but anyway they're really used to actually hold those six medium cargo containers with the large ports so you can put like components and stuff through the connectors so this can act as like a small transport ship you got a nice little viewport there some passenger seats the uh pilot seats here a uh, pretty decent viewport there, you got some LCDs you could set up with whatever you want on there, you got an artificial horizon way out there in the center, so when you're flying you can tell the orientation of the ship while it's in gravity, I find that's a pretty nice way to do it. And off we go. So underneath the ship here, what the, the, what the hell, oh hold on, let me fly up a little bit, it keeps on clipping with the ground, if you don't fly up you get the weird p picture angle there, anyway, see, it happened again. Ah, wonderful. Anyway, as you can see, it's kind of a simple ship. I'm not the best designer. I tried to keep it as minimalistic as possible so it could fit into small spots and stuff. Uh, I thought this um, thought this turret on the bottom here was kind of a cool feature, just so your passenger has something to do in case you were going in for the assault on the enemy base and you had the full crew in the back, you know, waiting for the drop, and you guys are just sitting outside turret range sniping out... Uh, the enemy base's turrets, your dropship here could do that for you. And, um, oh, uh, well, obviously, you could probably do the same thing with the Gatling turrets that are on top. You just have to go ahead and search them like I did and control it like this. And you could probably control the front one if you <laughs> think it's Gatling 1. I don't know why I picked number 3 or 4 or whatever one that was. But uh, yeah, Gatling 1 would look at the f have the best front clearance. Probably not because of a connector. I should probably reposition that better. But honestly, I wanted the large ports to be going through that whole thing to the cargo containers so that you could, you know, move con components through the ship and whatnot. So it's got, like, multiple uses. It's a military dropship. It's a, it's a light, small f freighter ship. It works wonderfully in planets at empty capacity. I haven't tried it full with all those cargo containers full. So... 
big old asterisk on that. But I'm out here on the moon because I actually flew it from that planet out here. Took a little trip to see, you know, if it would handle it. And handles it nice. Uh, it comes with 12 hydrogen tanks, large hydrogen tanks. That's why those winglets on the side are all goofy like this. You see how the winglets are all blocky and not good to look at. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, I kind of try to make it look good. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyway, the biggest problem with this thing is clang. Uh, with an airtight door like that, since I got subgrid on subgrid on subgrid, maybe, and they're all trying to force each other away from each other, but the merge block's forcing them back. It's kind of fighting it, but not really. I did a, I did a lot of tuning to get the clang to get to, to go away. Let's just say it was rolling stationary. You see how stationary and flat it is right now? I'm not even touching the joystick. Right now, I'm not. Um, but it is... It is rolling an itty bitty bit. I don't even know if you could see it on the camera there, but I did a lot of fine tuning to get the roll of the clang to to be a lot more ma manageable. Before, if you if you tweak any of the numbers on those back door, the freaking nose of the thing likes to tilt up or it'll roll left or roll right really hard. I mean, it rolls. I mean, I don't know if you can tell right now. It will still roll on you depending on how the door closes because it's very picky. But when you're stationary, it's quite flat more so when you're flying you'll see the roll happen but if you're just if you're on the gyros and you're paying attention to it you can keep the orientation flat and you you, you really won't have that much of a problem but besides that i think it's a fantastic little ship uh i'll try to work out the clang and maybe come up with uh better ways to make the um the, the back hatch there hopefully with help of some friends if i can and uh Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Later.